My name is Ilir Tupczyński and I would like to um, share uh, some of my experiences of uh, scaling um, Elasticsearch. Um, maybe the first thing is, um, you know, I'm really happy that you made it um, so far in uh, such a weather. So um, I hope this presentation will be um, a bit refreshing. Um, okay. So uh, I work for Ignite. Um, I will tell uh, a few words about uh, about uh, this company a bit later. So, um, uh, what we will um, talk about in this presentation? Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, introduce some basic concepts of Elasticsearch. I promise this will not be a very theoretical presentation, so this should be short, um, up to the point, and. Uh, really, I'd like uh, to introduce what I will talk about later, so uh, I think this section is really needed. Um, then I will describe um, where my experiences uh, come from. So I will describe uh, the Elasticsearch solution we have um, at Ignite. And um, the rest of the presentation will, uh, will give a brief tour of the um, some issues, problems, pitfalls we've, we've encountered. and you know, what to do about them. So, um, so this is intended to um, be a trash course of, of some problems that you may, um, you may have, you may see when deploying Elasticsearch to production. Okay, so without further ado, maybe let's start. Um, so the first thing is, what is Elasticsearch? So Elasticsearch is a document store and a search engine. Um, we have many uh, NoSQL databases. Elasticsearch can be, uh, uh, um, can be counted among them. Um, but the real power, or why people use Elasticsearch, is um, because it is a search engine. Um, it's built on top of Apache Lucene, uh, which is a very good uh, full text search uh, library. The problem, is that, um, the problem with Lucene is that it's very um, low level. So you need to know exactly what you're doing. Of course, it's uh, good thing in, to know what you're doing in any technology, but uh, in Lucene, it's, let's say, required. Um, and it's just a library, so uh, you need to, uh, so basically, you include it uh, in your application, and you need to take care of clustering, of scaling, of replication, uh, of everything. So um, since uh, search is very uh, common use case nowadays, um, Elasticsearch uh, aims to um, make it easier, basically, to provide uh, the, boilerplate, the boilerplate um, for, uh, for searching. <coughs> this means that um, it, it allows you to, uh, to run this uh, search uh, engine on uh, many nodes um, at once. It allows you to easily scale just by adding more nodes, so, um, so to make it a, a commodity. And if you, um, if you need more. Um, if you need more throughput, you just add more nodes. Um, it offers uh, high availability, so of course the distributed systems, they fail, so we need to be prepared for it, and it's easy with Elasticsearch. Um, it offers a very nice uh, API for, for the developers. It stores the documents in a JSON format, and um, it offers a, a JSON API um, to work with them, to search them. And uh, of course, finally, it has a great uh, full text search uh, capabilities, and this is because it's based by, uh, by the Lucene project. Okay, so maybe the basic terminology. Um, Elasticsearch uh, stores documents, so this is it. Um, a single document uh, has a unit ID, has uh, a type, and a document body or document source. So um, each document is stored within an index, uh, you may think about an index like uh, in, a data, in a relational, uh, relational databases, you would think about uh, namespaces. So um, you can have uh, many uh, namespaces uh, in the database. You can have many indices in the Elasticsearch. Now, uh, each index may contain uh, many types. Um, and uh, a type is a property of a document. Now, this is from a, maybe from a logical point of view, but from a physical point of view, um, documents are, are sharded or are splitted into uh, one of many shards uh, within an index, and um, each shard can be placed on a separate node. So your whole cluster 
basically consists of uh, of one or more nodes. Um, now, uh, below you see uh, an example of a very basic, uh, a very basic request to get the document um, by ID. So we can see uh, we can see how the uh, JSON uh, API looks like. It's uh, very developer friendly, let's say. Um, maybe it's worth uh, to add here that uh, Elasticsearch offers also a native uh, Java API uh, via some uh, binary protocol, but um, you will find uh, in many descriptions uh, online that people use the REST API because, I mean, there are so many so many tools to use with HTTP. It's easy to add uh, authentication, authorization. It's easy to chart the request. So even though there is some um, performance overhead, usually it's acceptable. Okay, so here we see uh, a comparison between Elasticsearch and a classical database uh, terminology. Uh, of course, this is just a, you know, it's not a, let's say, one-to-one -one mapping. It's just to give you the basic idea. So Elasticsearch node can be seen as a database server. Index can be seen as a single database or, or namespace in the server. Type can be seen as a table. And uh, of course, this table stores um, rows, uh, which are in Elasticsearch terminology documents. And the document matrices uh, may have uh, many fields which are kind of a columns. Um, the important thing is the shard. So this is a part of the table which is stored on a single node. And this is also the uh, unit of scaling. So if an index has 10 shards, you can scale it uh, out up to 10 nodes. OK, uh, now uh, important thing in uh, full text search is the concept of uh, an inverted index. So this is implemented by Lucene. And uh, maybe uh, to give an example, the uh, inverted index, it maps um, terms present in the documents to, uh, to document IDs. So if we have uh, two documents like here, um, a big brown fox and brown window attracts, attract dogs, um, we, can, uh, we can extract the terms out of them and um, and basically put a pointer to, uh, to document IDs. Now, uh, if a user wants to search for what does the fox say, it will be again uh, split it into, uh, into these terms. And now it's easy to see that we have um, fox in the index, and it's present in the document um, with the ID1. So uh, this is, uh, uh, let's say, this is the basics of uh, information retrieval. This is the basics on uh, how Lucene works. If you really want to, you know, optimize the queries, run them, um, there is a far more um, uh, to know about it. But these are the basics. I think this may be uh, good enough to uh, to start. Let's say. Okay, so not uh, all Elasticsearch nodes are created equal. Um, we have uh, three types of uh, Elasticsearch data. Uh, we have three types of Elasticsearch nodes. Um, maybe I will start with saying that uh, one machine can be, uh, or one node can uh, uh, can be at the, these three roles at one time. So. Basically, if you want to just uh, play with the Elasticsearch on your laptop, you just need one node, and it will be at the same time data client and master node. But in production, you need to split them. So you need to split them into um, data nodes. And these are the, um, the nodes that uh, store the documents, and uh, they perform um, part of the queries, return partial results, and then uh, the client nodes, they aggregate the results, and um, present them um, to the user or to the client. And uh, finally, uh, there are master nodes. They are uh, lightweight nodes, and they are responsible for, um, let's say, cluster-wide tasks. So they're responsible for uh, coordinating uh, the work of the other nodes. So for example, if a new, a new node joins the cluster, uh, the master node need to um, need to acknowledge it, need to let the other nodes know about it. If an index is created, the master node is responsible for assigning uh, its shards into data nodes. So, so basically, there are not uh, too many tasks which these nodes do, but they are important tasks. 
And uh, the basic hint here is do not uh, collocate different nodes together. Um, especially this is true for, for uh, data nodes, so they should be on a separate, separate machines. Okay, so uh, an important uh, metric in Elasticsearch is the cluster health. This is uh, like a very, um, this is a very easy to understand metric because it, uh, it has one of three states. So the cluster can be red, yellow, or green. And the meaning is, um, uh, let's say, uh, not surprising. So green health means uh, everything is fine. Yellow means um, you, uh, you may want to see what happens, but uh, we still work. Exactly, it means that um, some replicas are not allocated, but all the primary shards are present. So, for example, some indices may not have um, may not have a copy. So, so we are not highly available, but we are still servicing the requests. And if no more nodes go down, then we are fine. Now, red means that um, some um, some primary shards are not allocated. So, this means we are not able to index uh, new documents for for these indices, and um, we'll just return partial results for for some queries. Okay, so these are the basic concepts of, uh, of Elasticsearch, which we will use um, now. So uh, the company I work for, uh, Ignite, uh, we are, in one sentence, I would summarize it as uh, Dropbox for, for the enterprise. So we offer a kind of a sync and uh, sharing solution. Um, our customers, which are usually companies, they, they have... Um, uh, they have many employees. Uh, the, um, uh, these employees, they upload files, they download them. We have a sync client, kind of uh, similar to what Dropbox has. So, so basically, our problem domain are files, folders, and uh, in terms of files, uh, there are files metadata like uh, paths, file names, like permissions, and uh, the other thing is file content. So, for example, for PDFs or for documents, we can easily extract the content and also um, do something with it. And there are folders, which are, of course, easier because they have no content, just some, um, some metadata. So, uh, so we use Elasticsearch for, uh, to basically power our uh, search boards. User types... I mean, like in, like in Google Drive, for example, you will type part of the file name or something you have in the content, and you expect the file will show up high in the, in the search results. Now, um, uh, this system, um, or the search box used to be powered by some in-house uh, solution uh, written in Lucene. The problem is that it was written um, around about uh, five years ago. Um, there was nobody actively let's say, uh, enhancing it, and we were, I mean, far uh, below the competition, let's say, here. So uh, the search results were not that accurate, the search was not fast, so... I mean, the idea was to migrate it to something more modern and to have um, working, uh, working and um, up-to-date uh, search engine. We decided to go for uh, Elasticsearch, um, the other competitor was uh, Solar, but um, our DevOps team already used uh, Elasticsearch for Logstash, for example, so for uh, storing logs, so we had some experience, although with a different use case, so we decided to go for, for Elasticsearch. And uh, what are the scale at which we, uh, we operate? We have, um, uh, basically we have uh, three big data centers. In each of them, we have billions of documents um, and dozens of uh, terabytes of data. So um, for Elasticsearch, is it uh, big or not? It depends, <laughs> I would say. So uh, at the end of the presentation, I will uh, link uh, some, uh, I will link a, a talk given by some guy from Verizon who stores uh, hundreds of billions of documents. So for sure, they have bigger scale and they say, it's not that big yet. So, but they have a bit different use case because they use it to store logs. So they have, let's say, append only use case. They do not modify their documents in place. They just add them and, and search them. And this is a perfect use case for, for Elasticsearch. If you want to modify the documents, it's a bit harder because 
in Lucene, there is really no uh, no option to to modify a document. You, if you want to modify it, you need to write a new document and get rid of the old one. So, um, uh, so in this way, uh, we cannot or or in this way, I would say this trail is um, uh, is okay for Elasticsearch. Probably we will be able to scale um, even more. And. Uh, what else? We have uh, for the for these uh, three biggest data centers, we have three different clusters. Um, they are independent. Um, we have uh, 21 data nodes uh, in together. We decided to put the data nodes in Google Compute Engine. So this is something like Amazon Web Services. So you, you can just spin a virtual machine there. Um, this is also an interesting question. Like, should you use um, physical hardware for 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 the Elasticsearch, or should you use um, uh, cloud-based virtual machines? We decided to start with uh, GCE because um, at the beginning we had no idea what uh, what hardware we will need. I mean, we did some performance tests. We uh, we estimated the size of the cluster, but. Um, and this was, uh, we thought this, this may be not enough, that the production data, I mean, may be different than our estimations. So we decided to start with a cloud approach. Now, uh, when all the customers are migrated to Elasticsearch, we will think about migrating this in-house to, to a physical hardware. Um, yes, and the last point is also interesting. So uh, right now, if you will, uh, if you will search for anything in Ignite, this will be delivered from Elasticsearch, but we still see there are a lot of possible uh, optimizations to be done. So um, an important thing is uh, in Elasticsearch, and I believe in all these um, cloud data uh, or clustered databases, distributed databases, that basically you need to monitor all the time and, and, um, and iterate, right? So make some changes and... Uh, and improve. Okay, uh, what is uh, our architecture? So um, we have the data nodes, which are the the biggest machines. In front of them, we have uh, client nodes. Um, client nodes, uh, you need three of them to achieve uh, high availability. Because uh, sorry, uh, these are uh, both uh, client and master nodes actually. So we do collocate some of them because um, in our test it was, I mean, uh, the performance was, was good enough to do it. So, um, so you need uh, three basically master nodes because if one of them goes down, there will be still the other two. Um, and if we have only two master nodes and one of them will go down, then the other one will not be sure if this is a network partition or if it can form a majority. So, so basically, you need uh, three master nodes, probably three, three client nodes, and this is all you need. And then uh, you can scale by adding more more data nodes. Now, Elasticsearch is just a, it's just a search engine. It does not offer any kind of uh, authorization, authentication. Um, it offers basic load balancing, but also uh, nothing fancy. So probably you want to uh, you want to put something in front of it. In our case, we put um, HA proxy in front of it. So, if you don't know uh, this tool, this is a very, um, very good uh, software load balancer, uh, a very nice uh, piece of code, and uh, it serves some. Uh, uh, it offers uh, uh, some basic services for us. Let's say so. First of all, it load balances the requests to one of the three clients. Then. Uh, it uh, requires the, uh, the customer or the client to authenticate via uh, basic out. And uh, also the important thing, it, it offers uh, an access log. So we lock all our requests to Elasticsearch at uh, HA proxy level. And uh, what is important, uh, this uh, Elasticsearch is not our source of truth. So the real transaction processing just happen, happens inside our data center, and only the, uh, let's say, the events or the results are uh, replicated and indexed to, to Elasticsearch. And um, this should be the case for all the projects using Elasticsearch, because 
I mean, even in the recent versions, there are still some bars that under some um, strange, let's say, network partitions or network failure scenarios may uh, lose data. So um, I think the, uh, this is, uh, the important thing uh, to keep in mind is that this is not a transactional database and uh, it should not be, uh, it should not be used as one. So you should have uh, the real transaction database as the source of truth, and then you should replicate it to, to Elasticsearch uh, to have uh, fast searching, uh, stuff like that. And it's uh, very important also to monitor the cluster, but I will get to it in, in a few minutes. Okay, so now uh, in this part, uh, I will give um, I mean, uh, I will describe some problems that we had and uh, what can be done to solve them. Okay, so maybe first of all, Elasticsearch is a distributed system. This is very good because it scales easily, but this is um, very bad for other reasons. And the reasons are, for example, the um, CAP theorem. Um, this is uh, a theorem which basically uh, says that um, you cannot have uh, three properties at once. These properties are consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Partition tolerance basically means network failure, and of course, all the real-world networks, they will fail. This also means hardware failure, like server fail, for example. So, uh, so really, um, the system need to be, uh, so okay, so let's say this letter is out of the question. You need to have it because uh, this is what will happen in the real world. Now we can choose one of two. You can either have a consistent database or available database, which means that um, available database will answer to customer's request all the times, even if some nodes are down. And uh, consistent means that, um, that the, every customer which will receive an answer will have, let's say, the same, will receive the same view of the world. So, in case, for example, of network split, um, there will be no, uh, no missed updates or even if the customers hit two different um, parts of the network split, they will still see the same documents. Okay, so uh, maybe the first, uh, the first thing uh, to watch out for here is the uh, split brain issue. This, is, uh, this may happen if uh, uh, some part, uh, especially of the master nodes, will stop seeing uh, the other part of the master nodes. So, uh, so in our example here, let's say that uh, this one node will uh, lost contact for whatever reason. Let's say it's network failure with the rest of the cluster. It means uh, it will, it may elect itself as a master, and then we'll have two masters in the cluster, or in fact, we'll have two separated clusters, and this is what it's called um, split brain issue. Mm. Now, this is a problem because, uh, because uh, the masters, they will see only, uh, each of the masters will see only some of the requests, and um, of course, there will be no one uh, state uh, of the cluster. So, uh, what, is the, what is the solution? Uh, for it. Basically, the solution is to specify uh, how many master nodes we do require in the cluster. And so let's say we have uh, three dedicated master nodes. We say that we want at least two master nodes. So even in our case, if this one master node will form its own cluster, it will see that, okay, I'm only, it's only me, so probably I was kicked out of the cluster and I should not form, form a new cluster. Now, uh, this seems an easy setting, but um, in fact, uh, even uh, GitHub, when they migrated they, uh, their code search to Elasticsearch, they faced it and they had this split brain issue and they needed to re-migrate um, their, their data. Um, it's easy in Elasticsearch to, uh, to, to set this minimum master nodes setting, so technically you should be safe, right? Um, but um, there are also some bugs related to this uh, split brain issue, and uh, I will give some links uh, a bit later if you are interested, but let's say that in the older versions, uh, even this was not uh, a warranty for, for, uh, for avoiding uh, split brain issue. So uh, such bugs there may, uh, may be rare. The uh, Elasticsearch uh, is releasing new versions quite often, so for sure they are improving, but 
still this is not your transactional database, so this is why it's so important to have the other databases as a source of truth. Okay, uh, so maybe let's go back to this uh, trap theorem and consistency versus availability. Let's say um, we have uh, one replica. So this means that um, all our data is stored, in fact, twice. Once in the primary shards and one in, in the replicated shards. Now, uh, one of the nodes goes down. So the cluster will... It hosts uh, some of the primary shards, some of the replicas. Um, it goes down. This means that um, the primary shards that were on node one uh, will now be, so cluster will, uh, or the master actually, will promote replicas of uh, these shards to, uh, to primary shards. So the cluster will have all the data, but it will be yellow because some of the replicas are missing. Now, if uh, the other node goes down, there will be some uh, primary shards with, uh, uh, which went down, and there are no replicas for them. So the cluster is red. We, have, uh, we do not have full data. Now, if we do search, this means that we will see um, partial data because of the, of the missing shards. Now, uh, what can happen on, on an update request? Let's say, based on this partial data, uh, we do some update. Um, now, Elasticsearch, if it wants to process the update, or if it wants to be available, it needs to recreate the missing charts. But uh, how can it recreate it? They have to be empty, right? Because the data are, are, are gone. So it will recreate it from, from zero. It will recreate them as... Uh, as uh, empty, only containing um, these changes. But now, if uh, one of the nodes goes up again and rejoins the cluster, we have uh, two versions of these shards. So we have conflicting updates. And in this case, we saw that we were available, but not consistent. So um, luckily, uh, this, is, uh, this is not the default in Elasticsearch. If you will not change the settings, um, by default, uh, it will point number five uh, uh, by default, it will wait before indexing uh, the documents for the nodes to uh, go up. So, so by default, it will not be available, but will be consistent, and this is good. But, um, but still, uh, there were, uh, at least uh, in the versions we were using, there were some bugs, and for example, we were hit by it during some, um, some uh, recovery in the let's say, early days of the project when we have still a uh, quite small amount of data and some nodes went down, then some nodes went up and um, we saw exactly this scenario, although this should not be the case. Um, yes, yeah, so right now, luckily, this is the default, but in some other versions, uh, this was not the case always. So uh, there is some conflict which, uh, which is worth setting up. So uh, you can say how many data nodes you expect in the cluster. Then in case, at least for this one bar that we faced in 1.3.2, uh, um, you will not be hit by it by setting the, this number of nodes. So, so uh, this is one case. OK, now the important thing is uh, rolling restart uh, because uh, you can uh, change the settings to uh, change some settings or even uh, upgrade the cluster without uh, incurring any downtime in Elasticsearch. But this requires a rolling restart, and there is a, a given procedure for it in the documentation. Um, you should follow it. Um, you should let your um, DevOps know that this is the exact procedure they should follow because um, it's not a very complicated procedure. Basically, you need to tell the cluster not to, um, not to move the shards around. Then you can um, bring one node down. Then you can restart it, bring it up, wait for the cluster to recover, and then you can follow with the next node. Um, the problem is that um, it may take hours or even days for, for uh, terabytes of uh, data in Elasticsearch to, to recover from our restart. So uh, this is something that you need to be prepared. In the latest version, so 1.6, um, this should not be the case. Um, in Ignite, we are on, uh, still on version 1.3, but because of this feature, we are going to upgrade 
shortly because I mean, like if you want to make a change in the cluster, you have tons of data and if the rolling restart takes so much time, it's <laughs> basically it's unacceptable. So um, I mean, uh, luckily, luckily in the recent version, this was fixed. So uh, still, if you are interested in these kind of uh, bugs in Elasticsearch, there is a, a guy with a nickname uh, Affer, and he uh, basically tests distributed systems for a living. So there is a company which pays him to test uh, different distributed systems in the case of different uh, network failures, and uh, he does a great job. He tested Elasticsearch twice, uh, I mean two different versions, and um, I mean, the results are scary, but the same is for uh, for uh, for other distributed systems like Rabbit, for example. So it's not like Elasticsearch is bad and everything else is, is great. It just basically distributed systems are hard, and you may face uh, many many issues there. So um, his recommendation is uh, is similar as what we said uh, before. So you should st you should have basically a different source of truth, and Elasticsearch should not be one. And um, yeah, and for example, one bar that is still present, it's something called transitive uh, split brain in some rare case. Um, if you have three nodes, and even if you say that you need two master nodes to, to form a cluster, they, there may be a network partition which will, I mean, basically the node number two will think it's present in both clusters. So the node number one will see only node number two, and it will think, okay, there are two nodes, we can form a cluster. The node number three will see the node number two and will say the same. So it will still be a split brain, although technically it shouldn't be. Um, okay, so uh, Elasticsearch is a Java-based technology, so we can't uh, forget to mention garbage collection. Um, what are the basic recommendations for, for memory management in Elasticsearch? Um, the idea is to uh, to set only 50% of your uh, of your available RAM to JVM heap. Now, uh, why is that? Um, this is uh, uh, because of uh, how the Lucene library works. So it uses heavily uh, memory mapped files to speed up searching. So basically, it uses the rest of uh, of the RAM, which is free, to cache uh, file contents. So uh, so basically, this is why it needs some breathing room. Now there was a, a, a good talk here about, uh, in this very room, <laughs> about uh, on-heap cache versus off-heap cache. And uh, there was also, uh, I mean, uh, this may be, uh, if some of you were also at that talk, um, the guy basically described uh, memory mapped files. And this is exactly what, what Lucene does. So it caches uh, some of the files it uses internally in, uh, in the memory, so that's why it needs um, a lot of memory. A lot of free out of heap memory, let's say, or off heap memory. Now, uh, your heap should be less than 32 gigabytes. And uh, even if your server, I mean, so your server should not be more than 64 gigabytes, probably, because, um, because if you set the um, heap to be more than 32 gigabytes, it will stop using compressed object pointers, which means that basically um, integer will take twice as many uh, bytes as it used to take and, and some stuff like that. So, um, so even if, so you will have more memory, but it will be used less efficiently, so it's uh, not worth it. Um, now there is an important setting called uh, m lock all. It's for memory, memory lock all. You need to make sure that Elasticsearch can lock all the memory it wants um, at the beginning. I mean, at the beginning. So, so it, uh, for example, requests this 30 gigabytes of RAM from the operating system, and it should get one uh, big load of 32 gigabytes right now, and should not wait, uh, just not to have fragmented memory. And um, there is a setting for this in Elasticsearch. Um, the problem is that even if you set it uh, like this, the user, uh, let's say the Elasticsearch user in the operating system needs to have the right to do it. Even if it has the right to do it, there still may be some issues. For example, we faced it also once that we saw this exception in the logs, unable to lock JVM memory. And we thought, like, how, how this is possible? I mean, we, we set up Elasticsearch to 
to load all the memory. And it turned out that um, although the operating system was configured to allow it, um, there was some issue, I think, with the um, pop recipe, which, uh, which um, brought the last search up. And some permissions were not set up correctly. And it was up, but the memory was not locked. So uh, the lesson learned here is there is an API to check if the mlock all succeeded. You should check and you'll avoid this kind of, an, uh, this kind of issues. OK, so uh, field data. Field data is a cache of all values for fields. This is used, for example, in sorting or in range queries. This is stored in memory. And, it, uh, and the reason for it, it's expensive to calculate for, for big indices. And um, yeah, if you use some aggregations or sorting in your queries, Elasticsearch will calculate it and store it in memory. Now, uh, the reason, uh, the issue is that by default it's unbounded, so it can, it never expires because it's refreshed in memory also during the update, so it does not need to expire, and it's unbounded. So, at some point you will hit this issue. Circuit breaker, breaking exception, data too large. So, uh, in our case, there was some uh, field data which simply does not fit into the memory. So even though we had, um, we had a, a lot of memory for JVM, it's still uh, broke. So what you can do about it? Um, there are uh, a few solutions to it. I wrote uh, even a dedicated blog post for it. Um, but basically, the easiest thing, maybe not the easiest, the best thing is to redesign the queries. If you can get rid of the sorting, if you can get rid of the aggregations, then you will not use field data. Then you will have no issue. OK, but probably you want, you want your aggregations, right? So um, you can, for example, bound the cache. This is good then, because uh, you will not hit this exception. Um, some of the cache will be evicted, and, um, and you will continue. This is good, but um, you, need to, you need to monitor evictions. Elasticsearch offers an API to, to monitor cache evictions. If you have just a few of them, it's fine, because probably you did some I don't know, uh, untypical queries, let's say, uh, manually, but your, your backend service um, still works fine. Uh, that the cache that was built for your, let's say, one time or one of queries will be evicted, we are fine. But if during the regular operation you see evictions, um, this will kill the performance, basically. So, uh, so what you can do then, let's say? Um, you can, um, you can either add more memory to the nodes if you are below this uh, 32 gigabytes for a heap limit, or you can add more nodes to the cluster. And um, basically, the, uh, this is it. So if uh, still you redesigned the queries, you bounded the cache, and you see evictions, and the performance suffers, um, you just need to add more hardware. And finally, there is a solution in recent Elasticsearch versions called uh, dot values. It, uh, there is some performance hit associated with it, but basically it caches them on disk. There is a 10 to 20 percent performance hit with uh, with this, but um, but this is now a recommended uh, setting for for let's say new installations. The problem is that um, it's not enabled by default, so it's good it's good to read about it and basically set it. Um, Okay, so uh, I think we are uh, running uh, out of time, so maybe I will just quickly uh, describe the next points. So uh, about garbage collector, the uh, basic hint is just do not try to tune it, because Elasticsearch already did a great job tuning it, and probably uh, you will not uh, be better at it. So uh, also do not use uh, G1 GC, uh, so this uh, garbage first uh, garbage collector because it has some issues with leucine. <coughs> uh, so it may even happen that uh, you will use it. It will work fine for, for a long time. And then with some query, you will hit some strange bugs. So at least for now, uh, Elasticsearch is not designed to work with G1 GC. And, um, yeah, and uh, the basic hint is uh, do not tune it, monitor it. So add more memory, add more nodes when needed. but. Um, okay, and uh, now uh, long uh, stop the word pauses may uh, may basically uh, halt your cluster because 
if you have not enough memory and uh, this uh, garbage collection will kick in, it will try to free it, but everything is needed, so it will not free too much. It will try again and again. And uh, this may uh, halt one node, and it will not respond to pins from other nodes, and it will give an impression that uh, this node was kicked out of the cluster or, or something. So also, I mean, basically monitor uh, the garbage collection rate and, and check if you need to maybe add, uh, add more nodes or maybe tune the queries. And of course, watch out for out of memory exceptions. Okay, so the important thing is uh, to monitor the cluster. There are very good APIs for it, and uh, basically you should read up on them and, and use them. You don't need to use raw APIs because um, there are some good plugins. Now, uh, what to monitor? First of all, cluster health. This is just one of metric, and um, it will tell you if you are fine or you need to maybe uh, dig deeper. Now, uh, memory is very important. Uh, CPU load is also important, but usually the memory will be a bigger issue. You should also monitor index growth. If uh, your index grows very quickly, you may need to add uh, new nodes uh, to the cluster. And uh, for some systems, uh, query response time is also critical. So if uh, there is a slow query load in Elasticsearch, you can check it, see what queries are slow, and maybe either um, either improve the queries or, or try to maybe change the index mappings or something like this. OK, uh, there are basically th three plugins which are very useful for it. So um, if you want to have a cluster overview, there's a plugin called COP. If you want to do basic diagnostics, there is a plugin called HQ. It's a bit similar to COP, but um, I mean, uh, uh, if you want to have an overview, in my opinion, it's not that useful, but it has uh, some no diagnostic information. So it will list tons of statistics, and it will say if the statistics are fine, or maybe you should check if you are doing everything correctly with regard to the statistics. So, so this is also like a good checklist if you deploy it, your cluster just to see if um, some basic statistics are fine. And uh, finally, if you need to dig really deep, there is a big desk plugin. It will monitor one single node, but it offers uh, very low level statistics like thread pool consumption, um, memory consumption, GC rate. So, so this is very good in debugging issues, but probably it's too much for regular monitoring. And of course, use uh, nudges or some other tools which will uh, periodically ask the cluster for some stats, ask if it's up, and uh, will alert you in case of any issues. Um, also, it's important to have some kind of uh, access log in case you need to, let's say, uh, track some customer request or something like this, just to have a single point of entry to the cluster and log all the, all the queries. And there are some good APIs for it. OK, so basically, uh, we covered some, uh, some Elasticsearch uh, core concepts. Um, we covered some pitfalls of distributed systems uh, and uh, some pitfalls of Java programs uh, in general. Um, there are some important points which are missing here. So uh, if you want to really deploy Elasticsearch in production, be prepared to involve your ops team. Uh, this is a cluster with many nodes, so you need to automate it. You need uh, your DevOps guys to, to be on your side here. Um, there is a data modeling, which, uh, which probably would be a good talk uh, on its own, so how to, how to model your documents in Elasticsearch. Now you need some kind of a, a sharding strategy. You need to size your cluster. So these are all also important topics. Um, uh, here are some useful uh, resources. This presentation will be available online, so you don't need to, I mean, basically Google it right now. And, uh, you know, thanks for attending.